Hi guys, Sam here, and welcome to the Timeline of Phoenix Suns channel. Today marks the start of a new series for us where we'll be going through some free agent point guard options for the Suns one by one. We'll cover both the young and old, the cheap and expensive, but today we're going to start with Darren Collison. Let's get going. Darren Collison is in kind of a funny place right now in his career. 31 years old, he's carved out a niche as an okay starter, but he's not quite good enough to play win-now basketball, and he's too old to grow with the Pacers' young core of guys like Oladipo, Turner, and Sabonis. Since the Suns are even younger than the Pacers, why should they bite on a player like this? I'll start with the good. Darren Collison is an elite shooter, and that's something the Suns are sorely lacking in the backcourt. Collison shot 41% from deep overall this season, but beyond that, he shot 44% on catch and shoot threes and an absolutely astounding 54% on corner threes, making him one of the best and most underrated corner three shooters in the NBA. Per Synergy, Collison ranked in the 94th percentile among spot-up shooters this season, so there's no doubt that Collison can create some space for Devin Booker to operate in a way that guys like Tyler Johnson, Elia Kobo, and DeAnthony Melton just can't. If Collison comes to Phoenix, he's going to create a majority of his offense the same way he did in Indiana, through the pick and roll. And there's definitely nothing exceptional about Collison's finishing ability, his first step, or his vision, but you have to admit that he is fundamentally sound from all of those perspectives. Collison sports a very impressive assist to turnover ratio of 3.8, and he did a really effective job partnering with guys like Miles Turner and Sabonis out of the pick and roll. In addition to that, you can't underrate his ability to create for himself from the mid-range area. As one of the smaller guards in the NBA at just 6 feet tall, Collison sometimes runs into trouble if he tries to finish against larger guards. He compensates for this with an incredibly tight dribble, some good step-back moves, and a predilection for the good old-fashioned mid-range jumper. Despite definitely being more of a pass-first player, it's a good sign that Collison ranked in the 70th percentile in the NBA in his isolation efficiency. Even if he isn't a go-to player in the clutch, he can occasionally cook you in one-on-one -on -one settings. Moving on to defense, Collison fits in with a, what a lot of Suns players are already doing by playing the passing lanes. He averaged a career-high 1.8 steals per 36 this season, and he tends to play a little more aggressively on that end. With that being said, we're still talking about a 6-foot guard with a 6'3 wingspan, and because of that, Collison faces some serious defensive limitations. He usually puts the effort in, but there's just not much he can do against bigger guards, and that rules him out of a switch-heavy defensive scheme completely. He also sometimes looks a little lethargic coming off screens. That's something that surprised me as I watched, as you'd expect a tandem of Thaddeus Young and Miles Turner down low to be really good at communicating with him. You have to wonder if he struggles in that area in Indiana if he would struggle even more, paired with guys like DeAndre Ayton. Overall, if the Suns go with Darren Collison, he's simply going to be a one or two year stopgap option while they look for something more permanent. But even as just a stopgap, he'd help the Suns tremendously with their shooting, playmaking, and yes, their defense as well. He doesn't do much to lighten Devin Booker's scoring load. In two full seasons as Indiana starter, he only had two games with over 25 points. You also have to make sure that he actually wants to play in Phoenix as a soon to be 32 year old vet who would likely be surrounded by kids. We thought that Trevor Reza would improve the culture with his experience last summer, and that obviously turned out not to be the case. Still, I'd say that this would be a pretty good mid-range signing for the Suns. If I had to guess, I'd say a point guard like Collison is looking for a two to three year deal in the eight to $12 million range. The Suns definitely have the cap space for that. That's it for today, guys. Let me know your thoughts and subscribe to our channel for the rest of the series. You can also follow us on Twitter for more frequent updates at the Timeline Pod.